Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. It's the first time I have been here um, in like over two years, so it's good to be here in person. Oh, the kids are being dismissed. <laughs> Okay, so um, it, what comes to mind if I say the word angel? What do you think of? For me, I always <laughs> saw that. <laughs> I guess Bill's the angel in your life, <laughs> Sharon. For me, I always used to conjure up this image of um, like a floating figure dressed all in white with wings and a halo. And, but more recently, if I hear the word angel, I think of a, something that looks more like a person who is helping another person with something that they really need help with and just kind of out in the world with us. Now, a friend of mine recently moved to a big city and she didn't really know anyone there. She was feeling really, really lonely. And she also had some other um, struggles with uh, going on in her life. And so she went for a walk down by, this, by the beach and a woman dropped a glove right beside her. So she picked it up and she handed it back to her and they struck up a conversation. And very quickly, the conversation turned to God Something that really struck my friend about this woman was she was wearing a very remarkable, unique coat. It was just made with this really, uh, I guess, a unique kind of material, and it had a really different kind of color than what you'd see in our normal kind of Canadian coats going around. And, um, and the woman actually said something also very profound. She said the exact words that my friend needed to hear. She said, never give up. And what's really encouraging about that is that it was the exact phrase that she had been hearing and seeing the whole week leading up to this encounter with this woman. And when she got home, she called me and she told me about this meeting with this woman and I just said, I think that was an angel. I mean, I don't know, but it kind of could have been. And she said, oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. And then later on that week, she went for another walk and she walked past the address that this woman had given her. I guess the woman volunteered that information uh, um, in the conversation as to where she was living and staying. And the place was completely abandoned. Like nobody was living there and it, nobody had been living there for a while. So I wonder how many of you might have your own story of um, meeting somebody who just came into your life at the right time and kind of met a need that you had right in that moment, whether it was physical, emotional, spiritual. And, you know, maybe it was, um, it could have even been like a teacher or, or a nurse or maybe a stranger, like somebody who stopped on the side of the road to help you during a car accident or maybe just like a kind um, older person who gave you a word of affirmation on the street right after you got some bad news. Could be a kid running up to you and giving you a spontaneous hug right when you're kind of in the pit of loneliness and, and despair. And maybe you said to yourself, it was like, you know, he was like an angel or she was like an angel. And maybe even to this day you wonder if that, if that person was actually a real angel from, sent by God. So today we're gonna to look to the Bible to see what the Bible, the inspired word of God has to say about what angels are, what their purpose is, and what, what their existence means for us. So Hebrews chapter one, verse 14 says, therefore angels are only servants, spirits, sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. So angels are spirits. And their purpose, their spirits, whose purpose is to serve God. So Colossians um, chapter 1 verse 16 describes how all things, 
are created by God and for God. It says, for by him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Psalm 91.11 declares how God is the one who instructs his angels. It says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Um, so we know that angels are divine beings. They were created by God and sent by God for his purposes to minister to those who will inherit salvation. So who are the people who will inherit salvation? Who will be saved and have eternal life with God? Our answer can be found in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. It says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then verse 13 goes on to say, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you will inherit eternal salvation. So we're going to cover some of the main ways that angels serve God and help his children. There's a lot of stories in the Bible I had to go through and cut out because we had been here for a couple hours. So um, I just tried to narrow it down to a few that might um, encompass some of the main roles that angels have um, for, for us. So let's look, um, well, so I'll just kind of summarize. Um, angels are sent to protect rescue, deliver, guide, comfort, give messages from God, and usually those are messages that inspire hope. Um, they could be prophetic messages. Um, they are also, their role is to praise and worship God, to carry out God's judgment, and to fight spiritual battles in the spiritual realm. So the first example we're going to look at is found in Daniel chapter 6. So this is an example of an angel that protects and delivers. So here we have this young, faithful Jewish man named Daniel, and he had been deported from his home in Judah and taken to this foreign land called Babylon where everything was different. It was like major culture shock. He had grown up believing in and being encouraged to believe in um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now he was in a place where they didn't even acknowledge that God. Like it was just they had their own gods. So it was a lot of idol worship. And even despite this um, strong influence in his new you know, land of captivity, Daniel still stayed totally firmly strong in his faith to his God, even to the point where it would cost him his life, which it almost did because he, was, he made his way up the ranks to being a really high official in the government. Um, he was actually a supervisor over other high officials and they became a little jealous of him and so they set up this um, uh, scheme to take him out. So they went to the king, and they, they told the king to put forward this decree, and a king's decree could not be undone. And the decree was that for the next 30 days, if anyone was caught worshiping any other god other than the king, so bowing down to the king, this person, um, they would be thrown into the lion's den. And so they, you know, Daniel continued to praise God, and he was in the middle of prayer. They caught him in the act. <laughs> it was totally a setup. And then they snitched on him, and he got thrown into the lion's den. So listen to what happened while he was in there. It says, very early the next morning, the king got up. He hurried out to the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God, whom you serve so faithfully, able to rescue you from the lions? Hello? And Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. So at some point in the night, probably right after he was thrown in the lion's den, an angel appeared, sent by God, and supernaturally sealed the mouths of these hungry lions and therefore delivered Daniel from certain death. 
Then the angel disappeared before the king came back. So sometimes, um, as we talked about, people can seem like angels. They can just appear at the right time and you know, um, just show their mercy upon us. But the main difference is um, that angels have supernatural powers and they can become visible and invisible, disappear, reappear. Also, fun fact, angels never die and they never get married. <laughs> So, um, another example of angels, uh, God sending his angels, um, this time to minister to the needs of um, one of his people was um, in 1 Kings chapter 19, we have the prophet Elijah, and he had just had two major spiritual victories. He had just proven that his God was a one true God by praying down fire onto the altar that had been doused in water and everyone around, you know, acknowledged finally, yeah, your Lord is the Lord. Um, and that led to him also killing off all the false prophets that were there claiming otherwise. And he also had prayed rain down after a long flood. Now, Queen Jezebel, who was a bad, 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 bad queen, she did not like what Elijah did to her false prophets. So she sent a message out to him saying, I'm going to kill you. So Elijah suddenly became really afraid, ran off into the wilderness, and fell down under a broom tree, completely exhausted, totally discouraged. and. Um, he, he, because he believed that he was really the only one left that, you know, that followed and obeyed God um, in all of Israel. And this wasn't true. There were still people that did, but he just was hit with this, um, with this discouraging thought. And often that can happen when we um, have a big spiritual breakthrough that we can get spiritually attacked. So anyway, he, um, he said to God, uh, you know, I've had enough, just take my life. And then he fell asleep. And God, in his mercy, sent an angel who woke up um, Elijah and said, get up, eat, drink. Elijah looked around. There's this hot, fresh-baked bread right beside his head out there in the wilderness. Water, which he drank, he ate, and then he fell right back asleep because he was still really, really tired. And then the angel comes back, touches him, get up, eat, drink, you're going to need your strength for the journey ahead. Because see, even though Elijah had given up on himself, God hadn't. And God still had a plan and a purpose for him. So Elijah ate, he drank, he got the strength he needed, and he went the 40 days and 40 nights all the way to Mount Sinai, the mountain of the Lord, where God met with him and met his spiritual needs. Now, there are a lot of examples I found in the Old Testament and the New Testament about angels bringing messages from God to people. So the one that I, um, I always really think of is, it's, it's a classic. <laughs> it's the one where um, in Luke chapter two, verses eight through 15, the angel of the Lord appears to the shepherds um, the night of Jesus's birth and brings them the good news. So the angel appears, and the angel is surrounded in the radiance of the glory of the Lord, which would have been terrifying. So the, the shepherds you know, kind of fell down in fear, and the angel said, don't be afraid, which is kind of the common opening line for most angels um, when they appear not in human form. Um, he said, I bring you good news. And he goes on to say, um, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, the Lord, um, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you'll recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And then suddenly a whole host of other angels appear and start praising God, probably at the top of their lungs, which would have been another frightening experience, but also incredibly awe-striking. And, um, and then they just disappeared and went back to heaven. So... In Revelation chapter 7, verse 11, all, it says, all angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and they worshiped God. And this is what it's going to be like for eternity. Angels worshiping God and we're gonna be with them. And this illustration of, God, of angels worshiping God is really, really important for us. 
because it points to who, who the angels were worshiping. They weren't worshiping each other. They were worshiping God. Just like Daniel, who didn't worship any other gods, he just worshiped his God. And that's really important for us. Um, Revelations chapter 19.10 is an example where John the apostle, in a vision, he falls down at the feet of an angel and starts to worship him. And this, listen to what the angel says. He says, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus and worship God. Colossians 10 emphasizes how in Christ we've been brought to fullness, saying that he is the head over every power and authority. So that means Jesus has authority and power over angels as well. Jesus is our only mediator between us and God, not, not the angels. So we are to go right, why not go right to the source, right? Like we can pray to Jesus, he's God as well. I mean, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God, three in one. Um, so it doesn't even make sense to pray to anything else or any, any and angels aren't gods. Um, so Jesus is our model for that because when he was here um, walking the earth as both man and God, he prayed to God, the, to his God, the Father, right? So that's, a, that's our model too. Now, angels can appear in human form. We know this. Um, some of us have even had this experience where we are pretty sure that we've had an encounter with um, an angel that just appeared as a human. But angels are not people, and they don't become people. They are created by God as the spirits, the unique spirits that they are as angels. But they can put on human form and take it off, um, just as we as humans never become angels. And I know that in a lot of... Um, Situations where if somebody passes away, you'll kind of read in the condolences, well, now you have your angel looking over you, and you know, so-and-so has become an angel. But that's not biblically true, um, because we don't become angels. Our spirits will go on with us um, after death, either to heaven or hell. And if we believe in Jesus, and we're going to heaven. And then one day we will get a new heavenly body that will join up with our spirits, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but we don't become angels. So anyway, in Genesis chapter 18, this is an example of an angel coming, angels coming in human form to Abraham and giving him encouragement that his wife, who was well past childbearing years and desperately wanted a son, but it seemed like, you know what, she was just too old and she'd given up hope. But the angels came and told Abraham, um, by next year when we come back, your wife is gonna have a son, a baby boy, and it happened. Now Hebrews chapter 13 tells us um, how angels can appear in human form and it tells us, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers for some have done, who have done this have entertained angels without knowing it. That's what we were talking about before, right? We might not know that we've had an encounter with an angel um, and, and that's because they can, look like, they can look like us. Now angels can appear to us also in dreams. I don't know if any of you have ever had an angel come to you in a dream and give you a message. Um, but that happened to Joseph when he was engaged to Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit, but he was contemplating how to break up, break their engagement in a way that wouldn't publicly um, shame her. And so God sent an angel to say to Joseph, okay, Mary is pregnant, yes, but she's pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by another man, and you're to go ahead and marry her, and the baby in her womb, you're going to name him Jesus, and he is going to save his people from their sins. So that's an encouragement, and again, yes, angels can appear to people in dreams. Angels also execute God's judgment. So God is holy. He can't stand sin. Um, so in the future, God will pour his wrath out on the world, um, on the sin of the world before Jesus returns. And in the book of Revelations, it is, it's like a highlight reel of angels just punishing sin and carrying out judgment. Um, but God is a merciful God, and he will give us opportunity after opportunity to turn to him, repent from sin, and turn to him um, before Jesus returns or before we, we die. 
So in 2 Kings chapter 6, um, this is an example of angels operating in the spiritual realms. This is kind of what goes on where we aren't, we aren't aware of it, we don't see it most of the time, and, um, but it's happening. So um, the king of Aram was attacking Israel and didn't like that the prophet Elisha, not Elijah, but Elijah, E-L-I-S-H-A, who came after Elijah, um, kept informing the Israelite king of their battle plans, kept giving away their secrets. And so the king of Aram ordered his troops to go and find Elisha and, ca and capture him. Now they found out he, where he was, they sent their troops out, and they just, they did, they surrounded him, uh, surrounded the whole city actually with all these military troops. Um, Elisha's servant woke up early the next morning, went outside, saw what he saw, and was absolutely freaked out. And listen to Elisha's response though. Elisha said, don't be afraid, for there are more on our side than there are on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. So the servant lost his fear when he saw that God's mighty heavenly army of angels was actually surrounding them. Now this story shows how God is working behind the scenes all the time in the spiritual realm. Before Elisha's prayer, all the servant saw was what was physically in front of him, and he, it did, it looked very grim. Um, but then now we can see how the kingdom of God works and how the heavenly realm actually intersects with the physical world. So when Elisha prayed in faith, God gave the servant these spiritual eyes to see what was truly going on with the angels in the spiritual realm. Daniel 10, it's another example of um, angels uh, in the spiritual realm working on our behalf. This time it's um, an angel that appeared to Daniel and he said, don't be afraid. <laughs> First of all, don't be afraid of me. Um, because you know what, when angels appear like that, they can be really bright and overwhelming. And it can be frightening, but the angel begins by giving incredible encouragement to Daniel. He says, you are so precious to God. And God heard your prayers, and he sent me. But see, something happened. Um, the reason why I'm a bit delayed is because for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. And then the archangel Michael came and helped out, so I left him there, and then I was able to get to you. So the um, spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia is a dark force, a powerful, evil, spiritual being. Um, and he was putting up opposition to the angel getting to Daniel. So we really can't talk about God's angels without bringing up the fallen angels, the evil bad ones. So these are the angels that sided with Satan, um, rebelled against God, and were kicked out of heaven. And now they are... Um, Satan's minions basically doing his bidding as demons here on earth. Um, and, and uh, you know, Satan, his, his plan is actually to disrupt God's plan for salvation. So he goes around looking for someone to devour, trying to turn us away from God and towards sin. So we need to um, just be really careful because he can actually um, disguise himself as an angel of light so it's really important that we test the spirits, that we put on the armor of God each and every day, just suit up in, you know, be in God's word, in prayer, um, meet with other believers in fellowship, and um, just obey God's word, submit to him, resist the devil, he will flee from you if you resist him, and uh, just be spirit-led so that you can discern between truth and, um, and deception. But, I mean, the really good news is that Jesus, he died on the cross, taking all of our sins upon himself, um, and he defeated death three days later. So we who believe in Jesus Christ, that he's the risen son of God, we are no longer condemned to sin and death. Um, this means that Satan is already a defeated foe. And try as he might, <laughs> nothing can actually separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. Our salvation is secure. 
And if you're on the fence about Jesus, just please know that um, God will not force you to believe. He has given us free will. He wants us to come to him freely, and he wants us all to be saved. Um, but all it takes is a little mustard seed of faith. Um, and I just want to say that the sooner you turn to God, the more fulfilling life that you will lead. Now, faith gives us a spiritual lens to see that there's more than meets the eye. These examples of angels in the Bible can offer us a lot of encouragement. So no matter what's going on right in front of you in your circumstances, you can have faith and know that there's a lot going on behind the scenes in the spiritual realm. And God is fighting on your behalf. He uses his angels to do this. Um, you know, God is always working for the good of those who love him and who've been called according to his purpose. And this plan includes angels. So we can just be heavenly minded, um, remembering that there is this heavenly realm where Jesus sits on his throne as king for eternity. And the angels are part of that um, kingdom and now actually and forevermore. So one day we will also be singing with the angels. And even though we may not be aware of their presence, angels are here among us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just lift up to you um, each and every person listening to this message today. God, I, I pray that you will uh, encourage them with this message, that they can know that you are there and you are working behind the scenes, Lord, um, and you use your servants, um, these spirit angels, to... Um, care for us and minister to your children, Lord, and that we are not ever alone. Um, and even though things might seem hopeless, um, you do have a plan and a purpose for us, Lord. Um, I pray that you just uh, bless each and every person listening and their families today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.